wizard fans! Are you interested in learning how to PvP? Are you an avid PvP player who often gets asked how to PvP? Today I'm going to share 5 tips that I hope you'll find useful either for yourself or to pass on to others. About 3 months ago, Herman asked me to show a death deck setup for PvP, and I sort of said yes. But now that I think about it, deck setups are actually not that helpful because the meta is constantly changing. The instant someone posts a gear setup and deck setup, someone else is going to see that strategy and figure out a counter strategy. Decks and strategies are changing all the time. So if you want to PvP in a constantly changing meta, how do you start? Hopefully by the end of this video, you will have a sense of how to build your own deck or how to teach someone to build a deck. The first step is to learn how to calculate damage. In a PvP match, you only have 30 seconds to arrange your cards and plan the next move. If you miscalculate how much damage you can give or take in a certain situation, that can cost you the match. So in this match that I did a while back, I chose to shield rather than hit because I knew I wouldn't be able to kill. And if I hadn't shielded, then he would have killed me that turn. But because I knew ahead of time that my sandworm wouldn't kill him through his resist, I was able to pick the right move and follow up the worm with the killing shot afterwards. Now the good news is, most of these damage calculations you can learn just by farming in PvE. When you're farming, ask yourself, what do I need to do X amount of damage? What do I need to do X amount of damage against an enemy that has X amount of resist? If you're not used to fighting an enemy with resist, try fighting a boss that has resist to your school and imagine that it has resist to all schools, and try fighting it without prisons. This will help you learn to calculate damage under the conditions of armor piercing and resist. Your opponents in PvP are going to have lower health, but higher resist and higher piercing than you're used to. Another exercise you can do is go against an enemy that shields a lot, and compare how much damage you do through a shield versus not a shield, Make adjustments to your gear and your cards and see how you can work around that resist. When you get comfortable with knowing how much damage you can do in certain situations, that's going to help you make decisions about whether to blade or shield or do some other kind of setup during a move. One thing to be aware of is that critical works differently in PvP than it does in PvE. In PvP, Critical is 1.3 of what it would normally do, whereas in PvE, it's 2 times. Uh, but other than that, everything else, armor piercing, resist, damage, all of that works uh, the same. The second step is to watch PvP matches in spectator mode. Now, you can do this without having a current membership. All you need to do is go to the arena, go to the ranked PvP stand or the tournament stand if you want to learn about tournaments. There's so many different kinds of tournaments. Uh, just watch matches in the type of PvP that you want to do. It won't charge you unless you actually start a match. If you mouse over the players' names, you can see what level they're at so you can watch the matches that are most interesting to you. The advantage of watching in spectator mode is you can see the cards that are used by both sides, how they are enchanted, what exactly is being cast. Just mouse over the spell to see what's being cast and then look it up on the Wizard 101 Central Wiki if you have never seen that spell before or you're unfamiliar with how it works. If you watch enough matches and you take note of what people generally put into their decks, you will have a sense of what sorts of cards you will face and what sorts of cards you need to prepare. You can also mouse over the player's names to see what they have on them. All of this information is going to help you understand mathematically what is going on. After the match, you can also talk to the players or click on them and see what they're wearing, how they've set up their gear. You can also watch matches on YouTube to see the thought process that goes into choosing the cards every turn. 
But the disadvantage of that is you don't actually see uh, the cards, the actual cards that are being used by the other player and you only hear the commentary from one side. Also, the matches that get posted on YouTube are usually the ones with the highest entertainment value, which might not be representative of the types of matches you would encounter just by playing. So in addition to watching matches on YouTube or Twitch, I would definitely recommend watching in spectator mode. The third tip I have for you is to give yourself a number of options. Unlike in PvE, where you can just basically do the same thing for every fight. This deck, by the way, took me through Empyria and I didn't have to change anything about it until the final dungeon. I only had to make a special deck for the final dungeon, but everything else this deck took care of. In PvP, it's going to be very different because every opponent is unique. So you basically need to fill all of your card spaces and discard the cards that are irrelevant to the specific fight you're in and put together a plan on the spot. So if you get a storm, you're going to need shields. If you don't draw these, you can use the towers or the TC towers. Uh, if you get a life, you're going to want this, you know, you're going to want doom to stop your heals. Like it's going to be unique to each situation. So give yourself cards for every situation and discard cards on the spot. Now this deck is outdated. I don't know if it would work as of today, but I'm just going to show you um, a sample deck setup and why I did it this way, you know, three or four months ago. So... Uh, this is a very important card to have because you want to avoid them, avoid being stunned when you need to chain hits. So if you shrike and they stun you, that's going to not only prevent you from attacking, but also cause you backlash, things like that. So this is a really good card to have. You only need one near the beginning of the match and you can discard the extra ones as they come up later. And you're going to need uh, dispels against the more powerful schools and use this if they go into Shrike. Uh, if you're playing from second, Beagle can be a really good card to use when they are in Shrike. Uh, and Juju works really well from first, but can also be a stalling tactic from second. Uh, and also, if you stack your uh, normal tower with a TC tower or with a set, you know, that can also help you stay alive during Shrike. And now, uh, some of the other cards I put in are just kind of like wild cards. If they come up and they happen to be useful, I, I like to be a little bit unpredictable. So this is one of them. Uh, if, you know, you're going first against a balance and you think they might mana burn you, you can just throw out all of your pips on this, all of your 5 or 6 pips. And the 5 or 6 pip minion spams weaknesses, which is really, really fun. So then they have to either use an enchanted lore or something to get rid of it. And give you an opportunity to do other stuff. But this is very, very situational. Uh, I also have some weird situational cards like Enfeeble. You know, these uh, tree art is really, really situational. These are just weird cards that I like to use sometimes. Um, and of course, you're going to have maximum epics. It's really hard to line up the epic and the hit sometimes, which is why most people who PvP also keep pre-enchanted hits in their side deck. So these are already enchanted with Gargantuan. Uh, these are already made using the Mutate Minotaur card. So basically, uh, try to categorize your spells into stalling tactic, uh, defense against stalling, you know, defenses, offenses, these are offensive cards, attacks, and then just manipulations, like if, if you need to change the bubble. Give yourself a number of options. Uh, when you are pulling cards every move, think ahead and adjust your plan on the spot. My fourth tip is to look back on every match and think about what you did well, what you could have done better, adjust your deck accordingly. PvP is supposed to be a work in progress. There is never such a thing as a perfect deck or a perfect setup because people are smart and they're always adapting to everything that they see. My last tip is to try and be emotionally mature when you're playing. You will meet people with all kinds of personalities in the arena. 
Some people will get really angry at you for winning. There are also people who will try to put you down if they win. And there are also nice people who treat this as a strategy game, as it should be. And these are the people that you should try to be friends with when you come across them in the arena. Always try to maintain a positive attitude when you are doing PvP. Do not PvP if you are in a bad mood or you are hungry or are tired. Try to always put your best self forward. Treat your opponents with respect as you would like to be treated. And remember in the end that this is just a game. I am in the part of Mirage right now that's based on Percy Bysshe Shelley's poem Ozymandias. It's basically about this ruler, this king who once was really great. He built this gigantic empire. And then over time, it just all crumbled to dust and became this ruin. So what I'm trying to say is that PvP rank in the end is kind of meaningless. It will fade with time. The things that really matter are the friends, the memories you make while playing. You know, try to make this a meaningful experience for yourself. And those are my five tips. Leave a like if you enjoyed and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.